Hello and welcome to my talk. Uh, my name is Ken Kerner. I am an anesthesiologist by training, but I am also a dive medicine physician trained by NOAA, and I love to scuba dive. So today, we're going to talk about scuba diving. First, I want to let you know that I have nothing to disclose. I'll be talking about a little bit of equipment, some certifying organizations today, and I want to let you know that I do not endorse any particular agency or any particular brand of equipment. I just happen to have them along as, as part of the talk. So we have to ask ourselves, why do I like to scuba dive and why might you like to scuba dive? Well, the reason why I like to scuba dive is I like being underwater with the fish, the flora, the fauna. And there's nothing quite so much fun as when you're swimming along with a huge school of fish and you're kind of flying along almost like with a flock of birds. It's just a really great feeling. And there's sea turtles and squid and seahorses, all sorts of things to see underwater. It's just a great feeling. I've actually gotten into underwater photography recently and uh, these guys actually kind of lined themselves up and just cheesed out for me and I got a nice picture of them along the way. So being underwater with the fish, that's one reason to scuba dive. But there's also other things to see down there. There's the coral formations. Some beautiful, huge coral formations to see sometimes. And one time I can remember I was actually swimming along up over top of forest of sea fans and the sea fans are kind of waving back and forth in the water and I can look down through them and I can see fish swimming down underneath. And, I almost felt like I was flying over the top of a forest, looking down through the trees and seeing all the animals and the creatures underneath. It was just an amazing feeling. So coral formations are another reason why I really love to scuba dive. Hopefully you'll love that too. And also, it's a form of exercise. When we're in the water, you're swimming along, hopefully not swimming too hard. Ideally, you're not dealing with too much currents, but if you're swimming along in the water, you're actually burning off a lot of calories. And in the course of doing all that, you're actually getting a pretty good workout. And it feels good. And by the time you're done with two or three or four dives in a day, diving off the back of the boat, hopefully, um, you might be a little hungry. You're going to find out. Guess what? I'm in a beautiful tropical location. Ideally, you're in a beautiful tropical location. And you're someplace where these islands, they have amazing restaurants that actually kind of cater to the dive community. You're going to find you're going to get some really good meals in these locations. You don't have to bring your fish to the restaurant. They'll have good food for you, don't worry. And so here's a nice little shot of Bonaire, a place that I love to go to, great restaurants. We always get together there and we happen to be there with friends. That's the other part about diving that I really enjoy. Is we've got a group of friends that we go diving with on a fairly regular basis. We don't see each other but maybe once a year, sometimes once every two years if we had to skip a dive for some reason or skip a dive vacation for some reason. But it's really nice to get together with friends, and I can tell you it's a great feeling when you're sitting on the plane at a hub airport, getting ready to go off on that week-long dive vacation. You see some friends get on the plane you haven't seen for a year, and next thing you know, you guys are just sharing stories and excited about that week that's coming. It's also fun when you're kind of working hard, and it's getting cold outside, and you circle that date on the calendar, and you and your friends are talking about, hey, I can't wait for that week that we're going to go off and enjoy spending time in the water and just a nice, relaxing week. So maybe I've convinced you, you want to scuba dive. So how do I get certified? Who are the certifying organizations that can actually get you ready to dive? Now in the United States of America, if you do a search, you're going to find there's a multitude of different agencies. It's all a bunch of alphabet soup, PADI, NAWI, SSI, SDI, and there may be others. Forgive me if I miss some. I couldn't quite get them all on there, but there's also in the British Commonwealth, BSAC, and I think in the French, it's CMAS. I personally am certified as a paddy diver. I started with SDI and I kind of fell off the wagon, didn't quite complete my training, so I ended up switching over and became a paddy diver. So I've completed all my training with paddy. Now I'm not a dive master, I'm not a dive instructor, I'll make that clarification, but I am a paddy diver. So the first thing when you actually decide you're going to scuba dive is you're going to get handed a questionnaire at the dive shop. And they're going to have you go over a health survey. And you want to make sure that you're in good health before you dive. It's very important you get that health survey that you fill it out honestly, if you have a medical condition. It's better to know about that ahead of time. Most medical conditions don't preclude you from diving, but you want to have a dive medicine physician or a physician familiar with dive medicine who actually can help you understand what your underlying health issue is and then get you cleared so that you can actually start your dive instruction. That's going to be the first and foremost. Do not plan a dive vacation. Go off, plan on getting certified at a, far, at a foreign uh, country and have a health issue that you're not going to get cleared. So it's important to make sure you know your health beforehand and what you're going to have to get taken care of before you actually start the process. The other thing is a swim test. Now, 
At some point in your training, you're gonna to have to do a swim test. What I recommend is know what your swim capability is ahead of time. There's nothing worse than going through the expense of doing some of the initial knowledge uh, learning and then suddenly find out, oh wait, I'm not fit enough to dive. I uh, know one time I jumped off the back of the dive boat and uh, forgot my dive belt or my weight belt. <laughs> I had to make a good swim back to the boat, get my dive belt on or weight belt on while I'm in the water and then actually swim to catch up with the group. That was a bit of a workout. I was glad I was in good physical condition when I had that one. Swim test to help you know that. So then you also are going to have to develop your knowledge base. Now this can be either through classroom instruction, online instruction, or some combination of the two. It depends on which agency you're working with and what your personal learning preferences are. Classroom instruction has to be a lot of fun. You're usually with a small group. You've got a dive master right there. He's going to go over material with you. And you know, you're going to get to know these people because it's the same people you're going to be spending time in the water with when you actually do your confined water diving. So the knowledge base, what you want to know is the basic physics, the physics of diving, how, to, how breathing compressed air at depth is going to impact you. It's not complex. It's not complex math. Don't get freaked out by it. It's actually pretty easy to understand. The other thing, you're going to learn your equipment. I'm going to pause right there and kind of start going over some of the equipment issues. So, when you learn to scuba dive, you're going to have to get a mask and snorkel. This is my mask and snorkel. I highly recommend that when you pick out your mask, don't get online and buy this. Go to a dive shop. Get fitted. Spend some time at this because having a good mask really makes a difference. There's nothing worse than buying the best mask, top rated, whatever online, and you get to wherever you're going, it doesn't fit you right, and you spend a week dealing with a leaky mask that just doesn't, doesn't work with you. I'm also kind of a gear guy, so I have my dive computer here, which actually allows me to track my dives and plan my, plan my dives and make sure I'm staying a safe diver. We also have, this is actually my wife's buoyancy control device, or BC. This is what helps you maintain a neutral buoyancy in the water, swimming along in a level level plane, so you're able to actually use this to add air, subtract air. You have your primary regulator to breathe through. You've got an octo here that's going to be your backup or use for your buddy. And then you've got some gauges on here as well. And you actually have a pressure gauge on here. You've got a depth gauge that's going to actually help you keep track of how deep you went and how much air you've got left. Mine has a compass on because I'll do a little underwater navigation from time to time. The other things you have to know is how to communicate underwater. When you're underwater, you can't talk, so you have to be able to use hand signals to communicate. So you have to say, I'm okay, not I'm okay, this means go up. Or, hey, I got a problem, that means go down. This is, I've got a problem. So communicating underwater, you have to learn the hand signals for that. It's pretty easy. Everything's focused on safety. All the training you're doing is focused on safety. It's about how to actually plan your dive, understanding what you're doing when you're planning your dive. Then you're going to get into confined water work. The confined water work is basically done in a pool. You're kind of shallow. You're in there with the instructor. You're in the water. You have a problem. You have a question. You can go right back up to the surface, talk to your instructor, go back down, solve the problem. These are my kids doing some confined water work. So when you're doing confined water work, again, you're learning how to do neutral buoyancy. You're developing those underwater skills, how to take your mask off, put your mask back on, take your equipment off, put your equipment back on. You're going to work on communication. You're going to work on do not panic. That's really critical how to solve a problem while you're underwater, actually. It's not that hard. If you maintain your equipment, everything's in good shape, you don't really have any problems to solve, but you wanna know how to do it if you have to. So understanding and learning your equipment. You're the one setting up, taking it down. Now, for the most part, the BC, other expensive equipment, when you get to your location where you're gonna actually be doing scuba diving, they're gonna rent that to you, so you don't have to worry about buying that out the gate. So once you've completed your confined water work, you're going to get referred to or hopefully go do some uh, uh, your open water dives in a nice location, hopefully not the quarry. If you have to do the quarry, do the quarry, check off the box, get it done. But basically this involves four dives. You're going to practice your buoyancy, you're going to practice your skills, same one you did in confined water. You're going to work on communication, you're going to work on do not panic, how to solve problems, and you're going to make sure you're really familiar with your equipment. And then these dives also involve just kind of swimming along with the instructor. You're typically doing some of this stuff at 30 feet of depth. It's a nice, nice place, a little sandy bottom, someplace where you're going to actually be able to work on this stuff. But you're going to get to actually spend some time in the real open water with the fish. It's just great. So hopefully I've encouraged you that you want to be a diver. My wife got referred and did her uh, cert final certification in a lo dive location. Nice part about it is you get to travel with friends. You get to enjoy the ocean. 
good times. So in summary, we've learned that scuba diving can be an enjoyable activity, and we've also learned that the process of becoming a certified diver requires a health survey, swim test, knowledge development, and practicing your skills. I thank you very much for your time. If you have questions, please leave them below. I'll do my best to get back to you. Thank you.